congratulations on the film. Really, Thank really you. enjoyed it. It's it's one of those movies I love because it's so hard to pin down. It's you know, mm. it's a ghost story. It's drama. It's yeah. you know. Um, a period piece and everything else. I mean, you've played, you've been in some amazing movies. I mean, what drew you to this one? Because there's so many different elements to to this one. I think the character, as you said, was very different. There was something about him that I understood and didn't understand at the same time. So he was complicated, and I loved that. Um, the script was amazing, but and then Lenny Abrahamson directing it. You know, he had just done Room, been nominated for an Oscar for that, well deserved. And I'd worked with him before on Frank, so I knew that I would have a good time working with him. You know, at work and outside of work, he's a very, very nice man to be around. This is one of those movies, and we were just talking about in the press room that it really stays with you after the after the credits roll. Uh, so many questions, not a lot of answers, a lot of ambiguity. I mean, when you read the script, and I presume the book when you first did it, I mean, was that the kind of feeling that you've got that? There's a lot more questions for you. Completely. I mean, when I read it, I was unnerved by it. I didn't quite understand it. I had to read it again. And then I was, it got under my skin. There was something unusual and weird and very creepy about it and psychologically creepy. And then I read the book and it had exactly the same effect, <laughs> even though more so. Um, so for me, it was just, I want to explore that. I don't really know what that's going to end up like, but I'm intrigued. And the characters were so unusual. And I thought, not like what we put on screen often. Sort of British aristocracy is usually seen in a much more glamorous light. Mm. So that was fun to do. And the cast and Lenny, you know, so it was a no-brainer, but it was definitely something about how intriguing and sort of dark psychologically it was. There was something I didn't quite understand about it. The one thing I love about this film is that it's it's so hard to pin down. I mean, no people have said it's a ghost story, people have said it's other things, but as part of your job as a director, I can imagine that you were drawn to the fact that it was so many different things and you got yeah. to explore so many different things. But it's just great not to not to have to define something. I mean, we're, we're so kind of used to consuming films in these categories. So it's like going into a supermarket and saying, oh, you know, what are we having for dinner? Which is, like, it's fine. And I, I can enjoy a really good action film or a horror film or whatever. But we never allowed ourselves to define it. We try to stay true to what the sort of the odd atmospheric center of this story was and let it be what it needed to be for that. Um, now, of course, at the level of the mechanics, you are aware as a director of what the, the tropes of the Gothic style are and you're aware of how horror works. And, and so you can play with those things. But I think in the case of Little Stranger, we were playing with them in order to shine a light on a pretty kind of, um, like a, a, something which is essentially a, a piece of very psychological drama, you know. And um, it's, it's rare enough to be able to use some of those colors and um, tropes in the service of something that's like a bit more, uh, a bit denser and a bit realer. Because I mean, you've done things like Ex Machina, you've obviously done Star Wars and, mm. and Frank, as you mentioned. I mean, was there different challenges with playing Faraday? Because he's a very complex kind of character. Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot to kind of strip back, you know. He's got a lot going on and the time period and the accent and uh, yeah, everything about him, there was something, you know, we need to relate to this man who kind of is ashamed of who he is, you know, of everything about himself because of the class that he was born into and the expectation, not expectations, uh, but the guilt that was kind of thrown on him for being of that class. I thought that that was just such a strange place to start. Uh, and then it just got more interesting as the kind of film uh, progressed. So, yeah, a lot to unpack, but that, you know, that's what you live for is those kind of characters. I think it's a great testament to it as well that it's it's hard to pin down in the sense that it's, it's somewhat of a ghost story, it's a psychological thriller, there's a little yeah. bit of humour in there as well and obviously yeah. these people coming off of the effects of the war and everything else. Yeah. I mean it must have been great to, to be in an environment where there was so much kind of going on, so many things to get your teeth into. Yeah and also each time we did a take we could push the temperature of that stuff you know so we did lots of different versions of each take of each scene um, that would push the more ghost story element or push something else so that Lenny could sort of create that in the edit. Because it wasn't, we weren't sure, and it wasn't sure how much he wanted to signal one thing or not, or where we wanted to land. So I think he did a lot in the edit, was a lot about framing that and deciding how to sort of manage that, that journey and that pitch. Um, but yeah, often we'd be in the scenes, we don't have a clue what we like, we don't know what it is. Like, yeah. What is this? Are we really in love with each other? Don't know, I don't think so. What's going on? Don't know what's happening. Like, we'll just play with it and see what happens. But it was... It was really an unusual experience because it felt so awkward and claustrophobic and 
exactly how the people are. They're very repressed and, and unable to really express their feelings. So it's, it's, <laughs> it was really strange doing it, but amazing. And you're in the hands of someone who knows exactly what they want, really. Uh, with this, obviously, with this one, you're, you're working in a big house, and then with room, you're in a small place, you're in the floorboards and all that kind of yeah. stuff. I mean, what kind of challenges did this present differ to, to room? Because I can imagine it's a much bigger canvas. Oh, yeah. It's funny, really, because the two things were, comp the, the challenges were totally um, mirror images of each other. Like they were, so in the case of room, you have a tiny space. Um, but you want to make it feel really big because it's the it's the universe of the central character and you're seeing it through his eyes. So for him, it's a place of limitless kind of detail and extent. In The Little Stranger, you've got this enormous, rather chilly house, which which you need to make feel claustrophobic and on occasion oppressive. So the, the challenges are completely uh, different. Um, and I think it is true, and it's, it, I'm pleased by the fact that I think Hundreds Hall in this film does feel more oppressive than the tiny room did in Room. Um, the challenges there are just, you know, they're the, all the detail of production design, of, of, of cinematography, of, of how scenes are constructed, and how you bring a person through a scene, what, how you feel the interior of the character in that location, you know, how you feel the... The, the sort of sense of oppression, um, even though the place is rather beautiful and quite big. Were these the kind of movies that when you were growing up that you were kind of drawn to? Because it, it remind, reminded me of lots of different ones, stuff like Rosemary's Baby and mm. it, other, other kind of, these kind of dramas in there. I mean, were there movies when you were younger that you kind of watched and you thought this was kind of similar to those? Yeah, once I kind of graduated to watching films for grown-ups, you know, like, like um, uh, just add, like, dra like every time I say adult drama, it sounds like I'm talking about a porno. Uh, uh, <laughs> like, uh, that, that kind of thing, you know, like when I was doing Ex Machina with Alex Garland, he said, you know, there's not lots and lots of films that are really made for grown-ups, you know, and uh, I think this is one of them. So, yeah, for sure, it's 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 kind of of that ilk. What was it like playing Caroline? Because she's quite a complex person. Was it was it daunting at all playing someone like that? Yeah, there's so many I, layers to well, her. Yeah, I didn't, and I didn't really know. There wasn't a clear, again, there wasn't a clear angle on her. I wasn't sure about her sexuality. I wasn't sure about her reason for, you know, what's her reason, her main objective in life, does she want to get out of here? Is she in love with the character of Faraday or not? Is she, you know, there were lots of questions, like you say, and not many answers. And I asked Sarah Waters some of them to get clarity, but it was still up to my interpretation, really, where we landed her. Um, so I had sort of like a few things that I kept hold of and wanted to play, but it was, I didn't really understand her entirely. And there were bits when she's very childish or young, and vulnerable, and then other bits where she's kind of owning this house and being very practical, and um, so I, I thought that was a really interesting mix of things to play around with. And you just couldn't, it was never about not settling one thing, sort of being able to move through all those things, really. Uh, let me ask you about uh, working with Dono again, because, I mean, obviously you did Frank, a movie that I absolutely yeah. love, and now you've, got, you've both gone off and done other things and then come back together. I mean, was that always the plan, that you guys really wanted to come back together? We and definitely pick wanted to come back together. I mean, because we, we became friends on Frank, and and I love the way he works. Um, it sounds great, because he's he's a very, like like all great actors, he, he draws on instinct and immediate impulse, but he's also totally capable of taking a different view and looking at the screenplay as a whole and he really understands the project. So he's a great person to talk to and um, and, and, and bounce up ideas off. Um, so we were looking for, yeah, we always said we would work together again and this just became the, just became a great opportunity to do that with him in the absolute center of the film. Let me ask you about working with Domino because he's, I mean, he's such an interesting performer. I mean, he's lots of people know from Star Wars and he was in Mother and everything else. And it, in this one, in a, in a different movie with his moustache, it was almost one step away from him doing the whole twirling <laughs> moustaches and stuff like that. But I mean, he's so great in the movie and you're great together. What was it like working with him? Because he's, he's so, so unique and I'm, I'm always so drawn to, to him as a performer. Oh, no, he's brilliant. And he came in with a very... Um yeah, I think this was quite difficult for him actually because it was well, I don't know, he'd have, he'd have to ask that, but he it was kind of such a repressed character and so sort of stilted and awkward and claustrophobic in himself. I mean, I think he was wound like a kind of whatever, like inside himself. So it was, I think he, he had to hold on to that all the time. It was interesting. But all of us were like dressed up in like, you know, 
I had my padding on my teeth and Will Porter had his like disfigured face and a limp and like we all just <laughs> like complete weirdos like we'd just been crawling out of a bush somewhere <laughs> it's just so weird so you put us all together it was sort of hilarious it was on the edge of being absolute comedy yeah but you know the level of it these people do exist and actually they're more likely and more sort of common than the Downton Abbey kind of aristocrat you know yeah. these are the much more <laughs> British you know yeah, yeah, bad absolutely. teeth and kind of <laughs> slightly eccentric he did repressed have that kind people of, it was very close to being that eccentric I mean it could have, you could have pushed it over into that just yeah. like a few temperatures up you know yeah. and that's what it, I think the tone of this is so delicate you know of maintaining that and keeping the sort of psychology and the ghost story of it all to a sort of very subtle psychological um, feel. I mean, it feels like there's themes of class and there's themes of patriarchy and there's themes of, well, there's, there's it's a period drama and a, and a, and a family drama and, um, and repression. It's, it's such an interesting piece. Yeah. I can imagine after a room with all the success you've had, and it's such an amazing film, that you probably had quite a few different offers and, yeah. and whatever else. I mean, even though you've gone back to this, can you see yourself going to uh, a, a big, even bigger canvas with a, with a big movie? I know that obviously people would maybe mention to you Bond and looking for directors, but sure. can you see yourself doing one of those big movies in the future? I mean, future? not really. I mean, I think there's a kind of, there's a level at which it's possible to operate that where you can get your films to an audience, but you, they still remain your films, which is the place I feel most comfortable in. Um... I think there are, and, I, and actually I've an urge to make some smaller films as well where you can, where there isn't the same, you know, commercial pressure and you can be more experimental. I wouldn't say I would never do a sort of big film. I think there are sometimes opportunities to do something interesting. And, and yeah, you think, well, maybe, you know, life is short and um, it would be sort of an interesting thing to experience. But... I'm probably, yeah, most at home when I can impose myself on the thing and and I get to do it my way. There's a, there's a level of budget at which that becomes much, much harder. Yeah. Uh, just finally, I did want to ask you about um, His Dark Materials, which mm. lots of people are excited about. I mean, we've seen a movie which a lot of fans thought didn't maybe quite work the way it should do, but mm -hmm. you're doing a proper series, which is probably the, the best platform for a story like that. Yeah. Um, how yeah. excited are you to go into that? Because I know it's you and James McAvoy and Daphne Keane, who was yeah. absolutely amazing in, in Logan. Yeah. No, it's. I mean, it's really fun. And we've already, we're shooting, we're up to episode four now. So um, it's been brilliant. And I think, I mean, I I hadn't read the books before I got offered it. And then I read them and I was like, oh my God, well, I, was, well, I missed out on this. It's amazing. <laughs> um, they're fascinating characters. They're amazing. And it's such a fun world. And they've really put money and time and effort into creating this so they want to serve Philip and those novels and the fans properly. So yeah, you get eight hours for each book. Um, so all the characters get much more time mm. on screen or, you know, and um, we get to play it out fully. But yeah, it's an amazing, I mean, again, psychologically really interesting and a fascinating world and the themes that it deals with are really, uh, I mean, they're powerful. So hopefully we'll come together let's hope so yeah Listen, i just want to ask you about star wars i'm sure everybody's mm. asking about star wars you're going to tell me nothing i'm sure but i just wanted to ask you about the last jedi i mean obviously the movie came out and there's there's been so much written about it mm. and obviously certain things have happened with the fans and yeah and things with kelly marie tran and everything else yeah. i mean well, what was your was... reaction to to all of that stuff because at the end of the day it's it, i know people love Star Wars, but it is just a movie but there seems to no, be look, this people having an opinion about the film is absolutely fine mm you pay your money and you're allowed to have an opinion and you're allowed to like it or dislike it. You know, you can do whatever you want. The stuff with Kelly was, like, bullshit. That's a different thing altogether. So th so those people are just morons and those people are assholes. So that's a different, it's a different level of stuff. So that, you know, you, you don't buy that when you buy your ticket. So um, I, I thought the piece she wrote was amazing and I've got huge respect for her. So um, I thought she dealt with it as classily as an unclassy situation can call for. So, uh, yeah, I, I'd, I'd class those things as different yeah. to each other. And obviously having JJ come back in to kind of finish the, the story and going mm. back to Hux, because he's in a very interesting position at the end of the last For show. Sure. Right? Yeah, it must yeah. be great to go back to, to play a character. And it's three times you've now played him. Yeah, amazing thing to do, you know. Like, uh, I haven't had a, the 
I haven't done that in any other kind of kind of part of my life before. So uh, that was really nice and brilliant. I, you know, you know, you can trust JJ. So that's brilliant, and he did such an amazing job with seven. And obviously, he'll do an incredible job on nine. So. Yeah, this is my way of saying something without actually saying anything, obviously, which is <laughs> boring for everybody. But um, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited to see it myself, which yeah, is nice. I can yeah. imagine. Yeah. yeah. Listen, thanks so much for your time. Thank Absolute you very pleasure. much. Appreciate Thank you. It. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Huh? Hey, you guys. Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey. hey.